Hello, hello. Hi again. Uh, I think we're on episode eight. Or no, sorry, episode nine. <laughs> uh, I did title these and I'm actually looking at the episode number and it does say nine. Um, so in this episode, I wanted to do a little bit longer of a video um, and talk about the book dummy process. So this is a book that uh, it came out ooh, in 2022. I'm really horrible at dates, um, but you can pretty much buy it, I think, uh, anywhere most books are sold. And this is my first pass at the text um, of this book, Dummy, and um, my first pass at the characters and just kind of like how uh, I was seeing how everything was laying out. Now my art director, um, designer, she went through and just kind of like made little layouts for me just as suggestions it's not something that I had to stick to or anything like that it's just that I could if I wanted to I guess but it, this was their idea of how things were gonna break down on each page um, sometimes I get book dummies or, or galleys like that um, and sometimes I don't sometimes it's literally whatever you know size of book you were thinking whatever layout you think feels best for the text breakup um, for the pagination and sometimes it's on me to do that and sometimes it's not um, a lot of the time I don't mind it when an art director or an editor uh, have already broken up the text because then it kind of gives me an idea of what they're thinking um, but sometimes just with the flow of the illustrations I, I do think about um, I do change um, the layout sometimes about how things are um, are flowing and just what it feels like. Um, so here, I'm not going to go through every spread. You can honestly just watch it and just see my, my thought process that I'm thinking about. And I'm also, I don't think you can tell what the text says. Um, I'm not going to zoom in on, on, on anything. This is literally just a watch me sketch out this book dummy. Um, I'm not going to go over the text or, or really anything specific exactly. Um, because honestly, I did this book in 2000, I want to say 2019, um, I could be wrong, it, it was a long time ago, it was a while ago, um, definitely before the pandemic, I believe, but, um, but, so I don't fully remember everything that I was thinking about while I was creating the, this, this first pass, but, um, I do this a lot where I will do a little bit of a, of just kind of a generic pass of every spread and I want to see it as a whole because then that helps me understand the flow and what's happening throughout the whole book as opposed to working on like one spread at a time um, so that's just how I work uh, I also my editor didn't ask for I think I can't remember if she asked for a character design sheet or not she might have um, and maybe I can find that somewhere. Hopefully I have a video of it and I can pop that in a, in an episode at some point. But, um, but yeah, so I came up with the character look and I came up with the mom look. I wanted this, I kind of, it reminded me of, um, Ezra Jack Keats' mom character in, um, The Snowy Day. So I wanted that kind of like thicker bodied mom because that's just kind of the the feel that i got from the text but it is based on events and uh it is someone's real life um so <clears throat> i wanted to go a little bit um i guess you could say animated with it um like i wanted her to be round and i wanted the main character to be of I kind of based her off of a little bit of what I looked like when I was little because at the time I hadn't got any like um any photos of like the family and the actual family this book is kind of based on so I was just like okay I'm just gonna base these characters off of like me and what I think <laughs> um and and that's what I did and so my initial notes that I think I got back once I sent in this book to me, it was like, these are great, um, but here are the photos of the 
um, of the family and here's where you can pull reference from like this is we kind of want them to look and resemble um, like what the uh, family looks like and I was okay with that I figured there might be some adjustment and we actually did change kind of the I, I would say the the voice of the book um, in the style of the characters like you can see that this looks a little bit more animated like I said before um, it kind of feels like I don't know and I don't know an, an animated series or something or like a limited animated series to me like when I'm looking at the, the sketches um, but uh, so my editor was like and my art director um, they were pretty much like, can we get them to look a little bit more uh, realistic? Um, I, had, I had done a book called um, For Beautiful Black Boys That Believe in a, that believe in a Better World. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it's a long title, um, so sometimes I mess up on the title, but um, it's For Black Boys Who Believe in a Better World. I believe that's the title. Um, I did that Oh, a long time ago, like maybe four years ago, um, I think. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago, though. It feels like I literally did it yesterday. But um, <clears throat> but in that book, I did do a more realistic uh, character, um, a more realistic, um, I guess, style of um, people. <laughs> Like they had a more natural eye, the like the textures and things just look more uh, realistic and, and I guess natural. Um, whereas here in these sketches, you can kind of tell that they're not they're not necessarily um, uh, they're not necessarily n unnatural, but they are they for me I feel like they've got a little bit of a of a of an animated feel to them and it's more stylized whereas whereas my editor wanted it to be still stylized to an extent but leaning more towards a little bit more realistic so um, so that's what I ended up doing um, you can go check out the book I think you can find it on Amazon I th I'm not sure about local bookstores Barnes and Nobles might have it um, but you can definitely search for it and, and find it um, so that's the look that we that we proceeded with and so for the most part you can kind of see that like this book if you if you go back and you look at this video and then you have the book in your hand you can see that a lot of the spreads really changed a lot um, I'm pretty sure that most of these spreads did not make it to the final um, to the final book to the printed book, um, which is something that you have to think about um, and also understand that that's what happens. Honestly, this was like my first big, like from a big publisher project. So I was, you know, wide open to just like whatever the editor and art director wanted me to do, I was most likely gonna do it. Um, I wasn't gonna be like, I wasn't gonna push back on anything. Um, and while I loved a lot of the illustrations that came out of this book and I could honestly, you know, maybe like work them up a little bit more and I don't know, use them for portfolio pieces or something if I really felt like it. But I do feel like the the final book that came out, uh, it, it just looks really great and I'm open to all the suggestions that my, um, my art directors and editors give me because I honestly, they've been in this business for a long time most of them that I've worked with if not all of the people that I've worked with and it's a collaborative effort putting a picture book together so just because my feeling says that this is what it should look like it doesn't necessarily mean that that it's reading the way I think it is so if my editor makes a suggestion or my art director makes a suggestion or even the author if they do make a suggestion I'm going to really sit there and think about it and see how I can then add to that suggestion and see how I can implement it into the vision that I'm seeing and then also make sure that their vision is coming through as well because it's a collaborative effort um, for everybody. So, um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna say so yeah a lot because that's just a little, <laughs> a little way to like think about uh, what I'm gonna say. Um, but I, from what I can tell, I think, I think really the only page so far that actually stayed was the spread. I think it's the second. The second row of the one, two, three, fourth column. That one with like someone standing at like a um, a podium, and then people. They're actually in church, I believe, and that that actually did stay. But obviously, I had to update it because we changed the look of the characters. Um, so I couldn't, so I had to update it. I actually really love that spread, to be honest. Like it was probably one of my favorite spreads. One of the things that I enjoy, um, is that I actually do a little bit of research on this book. Um, I grew up in Charlottesville, Virginia, and, uh, this book takes place in Virginia. Um, and I don't really know a lot of the history that this book talks about. Um, but with the church scene that I'm, you know, I'm talking about now, um, I had to go and read. I'm, I'd, I've never read the Bible. Um, I know little bits and pieces, um, of it, but I don't, I've never read it like, you know, front to back. Um, I, so I had to look up the different stories that are in the book because it's mentioned about the preacher talking about the different stories and the stories that the little girl enjoyed. Um, and so I got to create these kind of like silhouetted figures that represented each story that the pastor was talking about. And I don't know, just something about that spread. I just really enjoyed doing that portion of it. Get when like you're telling a story and a character inside the story is telling a story. So it's like, I don't know, two stories going at once. I, I love stuff like that. So, um, so I don't know. It was just a favorite spread of mine. Also, when I do books like this that talk about civil rights and injustice and and um, discrimination, uh, I have to do a lot of march scenes, and those take a very long time because in each scene, there's usually thirty people, maybe or so, and so if you have like three spreads of marching, um, but I just didn't want to do so many scenes with um, with marching because one I knew that those would take a long time and this book is very character heavy like there's a lot of characters in each spread um but looking at it now I'm looking at it and I'm like oh actually we did keep a you know a handful of these spreads um I just had to update them it took a couple of hours to really like think through what I wanted to see and how I wanted the spreads to feel I've done three kind of historical books um, that have to do with, you know, civil rights and, and, and things of that nature. Um, this one, when the school shut down, um, I have another book coming out in January called School Train. Um, and then I have another book that I did, the Beautiful Black Boys book that I did. But yeah, so also a lot of the time when I'm doing crowd scenes, just to kind of circle back to that, um, I tend to just kind of place people like I place the bodies in, in on the page and I don't really do detail about what they look like because like in my head I have an idea but I'm not gonna waste time putting in everybody's facial features in this point my my main goal is to put in the main characters so the mother the daughter um, maybe some of the teachers because they played a, a bit of a role in in this book um, and about education and learning and things of that nature. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm not gonna, the sub characters is what you could say. Um, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time developing them up at this stage. And I don't even remember if I actually sent this in this way, um, or if I actually did go back and add the facial features to some of them, but you can see me adding a little bit more detail um, in that March scene. And I think, I don't know if that actually stayed. I feel like we had 
I can't remember. I'd have to look through the book again. I don't remember. Um, I remember there being one March scene um, and then we made some some adjustments and we added some different uh, we added some different spreads. Um, but for the most part, I think I think about maybe a little less than half of this book stayed the way it looks, meaning like the layout, the idea um, is still in the illustration today. Whereas the rest of it was kind of not necessarily thrown out, but we just had to make some bigger adjustments. Um, and that's fine. And like I said, like that's something that you do need to know that like things change. You can't necessarily be too precious with these sketches because again, a whole team is going to look at this and say, this works, this works, this works. Hmm. Let's rethink this spread. Something's not landing here. And like I said, it's a collaborative effort. Everyone just wants to see this book flourish and do well. And if you can't do that, if you can't take that feedback that they're giving you, then this isn't the right, um, the right industry for you to be in because you're going to constantly get feedback every time you turn in a sketch, every time you turn in a book cover, every time you do anything that the team has to see, you're going to get feedback. I think there's only been like maybe one, maybe two books that I've done so far where I got no feedback and they were just like, yes, let's roll with it. Or I got very minimal feedback and, and you know, sometimes that happens and that's just how it is. Um, and then sometimes you get pages and pages and pages of feedback. <laughs> and yeah, at first it's for me, sometimes it's hard to, um, to read that feedback initially because it's like you just spent all of this time like putting all of this sweat and maybe a little bit of tears into these sketches and then your editor or art director comes back with you know changes or suggestions and now you have to sit with that and think about it so a lot of the time when I get my emails <clears throat> that have revisions in them I tend not to really read them for a few days because I need to get myself in the right position, the right fr uh, state of mind <laughs> to receive that information. Um, and if I don't put myself in that state of mind, then I'm not going to receive it properly. I'm not going to um, do the best I can to make whatever feedback they're giving me sink into my brain and then reflect it into the new sketches I'm going to come up with because all the time every time they send these notes it's a suggestion it's a what they're thinking and it doesn't mean that you need to do what they say verbatim it, it a lot of the time it's like here's what we're thinking and then how can you elaborate on that and that for me is usually when the best sketch or the best illustration comes out is because I'm really thinking about what they're asking me and then I'm figuring out, well, then how do I take what they're saying and what I've already done? And then how do we elevate that to something even better? So that's just kind of something to think about when you're illustrating a picture book, doing the book dummy process, whether it's for you or an author, um, that's just, you know, feedback is a thing that you're going to get. But if you're still listening, thanks so much for joining me in this episode today um, or whenever, you know, you're listening and watching. Uh, I hope some of this information was helpful. Um, if it was, let me know down below in the comments. And if I can find some more book dummies that I've done for books that have already come out, I can't really show you anything that's current that I'm working on because, you know, it hasn't released yet. But if I can find a book dummy or um, or something that is like this again, I will for sure do another video and we could talk more about the process and how it all goes down. Bye.